I think we were pretty excited about that. I think, you know, one of the cornerstones of our offense play fast and physical. And I thought, you know, in week one, we came out and did that from the very first play of the game, you know, with the ball on the, you know, two yard line and coming on a heavy set and running a really downhill physical gap play and guys getting off the ball. I thought it set, you know, kind of a standard and attitude for who we want to be. Uh, and then that kind of continued into the game. And, you know, when you're playing with a lead, you know, you're going to run the football. And, you know, we were able to be effective uh, in doing those things in, in the second half. I was really proud, obviously, of the offensive line and the whole, you know, the whole group. And, and I thought that the tight ends played hard as well and, and very physical. And, and it was a good way to start start the season from that standpoint. Doug Halley, The Athletic. Uh, Justin, Her Herm said the other day that he thought Curtis Hodges played one of his better games, if not the best game that he has played since he's been here. Um, just what do you see from him and, and what stood out for you? Um, you know, as far as what we were able to see from him in week one was someone that was well prepared, that was, you know, reliable, uh, played assignment sound, played with good pad level, was a six seven guy, you know, that's always a challenge. And, um, you know, he played with good pad level, he played physical and came off the ball and, and, and tried to attack people. And that's one of the things for the, as far as the tight ends as a group we're trying to do, whether, you know, all three phases of the game, you know, run game, pass game, protections. We're trying to attack people down the field. And, and uh, you know, I thought he did a great job of, of doing that in week one. Chris Cartman, son of a source. Justin, the, the overall assignment soundness of your guys in that and just the attention, detail, execution, all that stuff, what would you say about how that went? I was proud of him. I was really proud of him. Uh, this, this is not an easy offense to play in. Um, you know, as a tight end, we run, you know, every run scheme known to man, they're asked to, you know, do a lot of things in protections and, you know, they're asked to, you know, be attached tight end receivers and then get out in space in the slot and be slot receivers and sometimes be, be flexed out. And so there's just a lot of things they get asked to do. Uh, we kind of have a motto of like, we need to be the type of guys that, that are extremely efficient in our preparation, extremely efficient in, in not wasting reps in practice and efficient in our meeting time. And we just got to be able to do more with less. Um, you know, the other th side of that, too, from a practice standpoint and a meeting standpoint is all our guys are involved on special teams. Um, so it's not necessarily like the old line that gets, you know, additional indie time. Uh, it's not necessarily, you know, like, like those, those groups that aren't involved on special teams with, you know, extra meeting time, extra indie time. You know, when it comes down to Saturdays, if, if we're not executing and blocking people and targeting correctly, nobody cares. <laughs> Everyone wants to do our job. Uh, if we're not getting open in the pass game, we're not catching the football, nobody cares about those challenges, right? Um, and, and our guys know that. They accept that. And I think that's just been one of those challenges that they've been great uh, in these last, you know, uh, since we started the season on, on kind of embracing. And, you know, it was, I was really pleased and proud of those guys in, in week one for being assignment sound, for being able to be trusted. And, you know, one of our kind of unofficial goals is just to be, you know, be a reliable group in this offense that can be counted on. So. Yeah, uh, Case Hatch and John Stivers, just their, what they bring uh, um, to, into the fold and how you thought that that looked in terms of what you expected from them. Yeah, you know, number one, I, I think Case and John both bring a, a, like a maturity to the room. Um, you know, we talk about the pro model here. Those guys, I don't care if they're amateurs right now, according to the NCAA, those guys are pros every day when they walk in this building um, by the way that they conduct themselves. Um, you know, and so they... They really set a standard in the room, and you know, like obviously Case is one of the team leaders uh, and one of the captains, and, and he does that, you know, offense, special teams, and, and for the entire team. And so, you know, for those guys to have that kind of respect because of the way that they go about their business every day, and then to go out on Saturday and, and to execute again extremely well, um, and what they were asked to do and in their respective roles, I think they both played around 28 plays, you know, on the offensive side, and obviously Case played another. You know, I don't know how many plays on special teams as well. So, um, but you know, I, I was proud of those guys as well and the way they executed. And they just bring that professionalism, uh, you know, to the room that that you can't put a you, know, you can't put a price tag on because it makes everybody around them better. Hey, coach Zach Keenan with Devils Digest. Uh, Case Hatch again. He had a great game, and it seemed like he was involved on almost every touchdown. Even though he's not able to be in the stat book, how do you give him praise or how do you credit him for having a good game? I mean, you know, you, you get credit by the group and number one, like Coach Herm and, and the offensive coordinator, Coach Hill, those guys are awesome. Like, 
you know, going out of their way to, to give those guys compliments. You know, you know, maybe those are things that the fans don't see. You know, but there are things that if you're in this building and you're in the program, you, you notice those things. And, and uh, so they understand their value. You know, and, and I think that's kind of the role of the tight end, you know, in general is to, is to be one of those guys that just does their 111th, that's just going to do their job, um, that's going to have their time where we have certain plays for them. But by and large, you know, our, our production as an offense and as a group, you know, is going to be just a part of that role and doing whatever is asked. And, you know, no, no task is too small mentality. And, you know, like with Case, I, I think in this last week too, it just – the guy just outfights his weight class, man. He's so fun to watch to me, and I think people see that, and uh, and just the way that he tries to to attack people, and and he plays. He's one of those guys that just plays every play, like it's his last play he's ever gonna play, and and those are some of the most fun players to kind of watch if you're if you're a fan or, you know, you're in, you're in the stands. You just you see you see that level of commitment to to what we're all trying to accomplish, and and uh, he does it every single play, and, and really every day. He's awesome. Hey, Coach. Jonah Crow, WCSN. Um, this is a new role for you with stepping in as interim uh, coach. So I want to know, what has this been like for you stepping into this role, and how do you think it has been like um, just leading the tight ends in this new position? Uh, I mean, it's been a blast. I wish I didn't have this mask on so you can see the smile on my face right now. Uh, no, it's just, you know, whenever you get a chance, you know, over the last couple of years, of being the guy with his arms crossed, um, you know, not being able to, to run a drill, not being able to communicate what you're seeing, information things going to have a chance to help guys get better. None of us as coaches really, you know, we, we start off in this profession because we obviously have a passion of working with young people. And, like, as players, you know, people invested in us and helped us try to reach our potential. And you had such a positive experience with that. You're like, hey, I want to get back and coach now, right, and, and do that for other young people. And, and so being off the field is, is definitely a challenge because you get disconnected a little bit from the relationship side of being a coach. So I think, you know, just absolutely having a blast, getting to put your hands on this group of guys, which obviously is a, it's a good group of, of talent, good young people. Um, so I'm just having a ton of fun with it. You know, I really am. Coach, uh, Jalen Conyers, uh, where would you say that he's at? Obviously he's learning, playing with his hand in the ground and a lot of things that he hasn't been asked to do previously. Where would you say he's at in terms of his uh, evolution? I, I think Jalen's developing well. You know, he's still really a freshman. Um, as you pointed out, you know, he was a high school wide receiver that didn't really have to play with his hand down. So he's, you know, he's very developmental in the, in the blocking game, and we kind of knew that going in. Uh, I think we're seeing signs where, you know, he's, he's making improvement uh, every week. And, you know, he, he did have a chance. I think he played about 16 snaps. He was in on the first touchdown as well. You know, we're using those multiple personnel groups. You know, he's a guy that we're trying to bring along, not give too much to too soon. Uh, he is extremely talented in the pass game and, and as a receiver. And, you know, is, is one of those guys that has incredible ball skills. And, and, and that, comes, that part of the game comes pretty natural to him because of his background. Um, so I like the progress he's making right now. And, you know, he's, you know, we have a lot of good conversations about his mindset going into it. Uh, he knows he's, you know, if if Kurt needs to play off or if, you know, he's that next guy in and up. Um, you know, if, if Kurt goes down for some reason, you got to be ready to go. You know, that's what I said last week. You're ready to play 60 plays if he gets hurt on the first play of the game. You know, and, and so, you know, because we use multiple personnel groups, you know, you got the inline, the wide position, you got the off, you know, H-back position. We get into two tight end sets. Trying to keep things from a mental perspective right now, just let him really kind of focus on that wide position, right? Just just look at being that wide, being Kurt's backup, bringing him along, and as he starts getting confident and comfortable in what he's doing, start getting him more. It's a 12-game season. I know before this thing's all said and done, he's going to have a huge role. Uh, he had a small role, and he was ready to have a bigger role last week. And, you know, on a week-to-week -week basis, we'll see how that continues to, to go. Um, but I love the progress he's making, and I think he's excited by it. And he's getting more confident, and as he gets confidence, as every player does, you know, their performance and production starts becoming better. Um, so I think he's on the right track.